Thank you. Uh, before we'll share our stories, but I want to uh, pay respect and give thanks for our families, tradition owners of this land, Laroque people, and also great privilege having uh, international people are uh, here with us, sharing that information to them and s telling stories. Thank you. I have here with me my ecology, uh, Cara Patton. She's been uh, working with us um, almost two years, I suppose. Yeah, two three. And also I have my daughter, uh, Penelope Babuk. Also I have my Gara, which is Yarang, we mean mom. It's also in Balanda word or in Balanda word, we call auntie. Also my nephew, Conrad, um, nephew also, you know, in Balanda word, nephew, but meaning word, Koloi, my son. Our presentation today, a monitoring program that we have been working on for quite a while, um, this method. So, Cara, you want to go here first? Oh, you just want to talk about where it is? Wedding and land management is uh, up in the western and central Arnhem land. It's situated between the Kakadu National Park on the other side, in Arnhem land, uh, on the eastern side. There's a couple of ranger um, base, uh, not a couple of ranger groups out there. There's a Mimal ranger on the other side, jail ranger on the other side as well. Jail rangers, IPA program is overlapping between them, uh, what again, and jail. The reason for that, intermarriages, family lines, people with you know, movements for a long time. But in this particular place, People left from last 200 years ago during the colonization. But now we're making a difference. The reason that we went back, there was a devastating fire been happening decades ago when the people moved out last 100 years ago, going toward the growth areas or town that has been set up, missionaries and the government set, um, groups that um, set up in the settlement. Leaving the plateau being, became an orphan. When you leave something behind, something going to change a lot. Bad fires, animals starting to disappear because there's no people in there. No one's looking after the land. But just recent, over the years, last 20 odd years ago, we thank, I'm very, very thankful to uh, our friend, uh, Jeremy Russell Smith and his partners in South Town University. They've shown us something different what has been happening over the last decades ago. Wildfire has taken over, and they started to come in and talk to us about what has been happening. And the old fellas that I've been with and I've been engaging with them was telling, they was really, really furious. They were still sad because of there were no one living on that land. Nobody was looking after that country. Massive uh, destructive fires took place. Since we moved and started taking control of wildfires, things have changed in many in Wadigan area. There's a two of uh, three areas that we looked at and monitoring it: biodiversity programs, wildfires 
and uh, rock hard monitoring program as well. Those things, especially uh, rock hard, has been left by ancient people that they've passed on from the last 200 years or more. People left so many stories, too many, so many artifacts or sitting. When people were living in there, they were managing it, looking after the story, uh, stories. It's like an archive for the next generation to come along and start to you know, work on it. Because it's, in, it's important for our people. It holds a crown jewels in this particular area. There's a lot of uh, endemic species. Some are disappearing. Some are being found and monitoring it. There's an ancient um, rainforest that is still exists. It's called Anbinic Elsincapia. That we try to look after and see that rainforest you know, um, have a better chance of uh, growing back again. It, you know, it, the tree that grows for almost 800 years and later on after 800 years maybe it could drop down. But a lot of those trees, rainforests, have burnt. Some, t uh, some has been a human effectus. But the changes occurred through hundred thousands of years ago or million years ago. Country was burning as well. And our people was moving in, settling in in a place. And the land was becoming a cooler and cooler. Today our team here wanna talk about what is the success stories, how we monitor are we finding these things, uh, our, our animals, our, our birds? Because this, those animals and birds and flowers and faunas, they hold secrecy. They hold a metaphor for each clan group. Not just for in our land, but also in your land as well. That's why the fire is one of the element that we need to protect because they, if you don't, it can be dangerous. We have been championed from the past that our elders and our ancient knowledge has kept us alive through burning. But since the time that I was traveling and growing up and young, I've seen a lot of signposts, don't burn the, don't burn the bush or don't burn this country, otherwise you go to court and you go sent to jail and you'll be fined with $25,000 or whatever. And I said to myself, that's crap. <laughs> but we had right. We've been observing our land through our practices and managing it by storytelling our ch kids, telling them the stories about each individual. Our guardianship, the land is protecting us. Our guardians are watching us as well, doing the right things. And having, you know, um, in this job, I think that's a great opportunity for new young children today, young ones, as we sing this performance here. I had a lot of journeys and I prepared this fire project for many years ago. And I've seen a great champion of our indigenous ranger groups across northern Australia. What a really proud thing that happened. We are here today, we are sharing our knowledge and understanding together. How good is that? I would like to invite um, 
Kara. Oh, my name is Conrad Marangura. I'm from <clears throat> on Pali community, but I've worked with Watergen nearly more than 30 years since the start of Watergen when all people started. And <clears throat> one of the expect we've been looking at it's looking at fire in many other ways. One, it's everyone was talking about it. It's by Chopper, but the, the early years of making fire, it's by walkabout out in stone countries. And the first time what again had that walkabout through from Gabawanamur all the way to Mikin Valley in cross border to Kakadu National Park. And that that was the, you know, best fire management I've seen. And, and this picture kind of shows that story where we got a group of children, school children, taking them for a walk and teaching them how to do fire management, where all people started off by, by foot tracks. And in, in this story, we kind of, you know, we were interested in looking at different things compared to fire management. And then we kind of looked water and kind of looked at how, how much damage from from all different source, like feral animals and even including fire itself. And the water, we kind of seen it, it it's been damaged for many decades because of all those introduced things like weeds and other stuff, not not feral animals, but also other stuff like plants. And and when we when we went our first time on bushwalk, we kind of saw things that had made change in, in countries. And in there's how many countries we've got? Where's my stand? I might have my brakes <laughs> taken too long. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Rosper. Um talking about what again IPA monitoring and program. There were hundred and twenty sites across the IPA from five Tawaro, Habit Tab, and Binik. Mangabo and Manni, which is food and creek. So this is the picture. <clears throat> it's cover the water and IPA. In each, all the states select with senior landowners or also a, a caretaker, which is we say Jungai, which is um, one of them. Each clan states survey every two and three years since 2017. I'm here to talk about our Felixa trap we've been working on over the last couple of months. Older one when we did that. Great to find the cats. Yeah, um, camera, camera, and sorry, I'm a bit nervous. Sorry. Right. Just describe what you're doing in those two photos. Yeah, okay, let's see. see the one. Yep, okay, um, we went out to Barach and we've been putting out the cameras and for this one, we've been actually looking at um, a particular bird that have been seen around in Arnhem Land. And it's been hard for us to look for it because we haven't seen, and then we've checked all the maps and then we went everywhere. And then we actually got some around my area, which is Baraj. And it was pretty, um, we were very happy in the end when we, got a shot of the bird and we actually seen it very close when we were uh, looking for its help. Yeah. Amazing. Great job. 
All right, I've been told to do a quick wrap up, so I'll go through this quickly. Um, main point, I guess, of the program sides from monitoring is really having meaningful engagement and employment of traditional landowners on country. So at each step of the program, it's really important that um, the right people are involved, um, that we co-design the projects and we have consultations. We can deliver the ecology program in different ways. So a photo there, for example, is a camp um, actually in Kakadu National Park um, involving families um, from those estates. Um, where we can, we work with the school and we often have work experience students um, who are just dead set amazing all across the technology. And last year, we integrated ecological training. So a lot of the skills that a lot of the rangers were already um, highly adept at in terms of camera trapping ID, GPS training, um, and delivered certificate to conservation and land management units out on country. And there were four um, women rangers who were successful in achieving that degree last year, which is really great. How we use the data is that we identify cultural and ecological priority areas in the IPA, um, and this can be based on priority places or priority species from an ecological or a cultural perspective. Um, we're using it to inform management such as strategic burning, aerial and on ground um, to consider places that we may need to keep unburnt um, and where to create strategic fire breaks that may actually benefit um, those species. Um, we do share this data um, and, you know, contribute to threatened species research and management plans um, to better understand species in the region. Um, but the priority is empowering landowners to make informed decisions for their country um, to support biodiversity. And that's it. <laughs>